Hello guys and welcome to this video uh, to learn about challenging cases, okay, like this one. And the content is about cysts and odontogenic tumors as well. So we have here a challenging case. We have a CBCT scan, of course, and then you guys are seeing the three orthogonal planes. So basically for us to remind, uh, this is sagittal, the sagittal plane, and this is the axial plane on the bottom left of my screen. And then here in the middle of my screen, we have the coronal plane. But of course, I'm going to tilt to angle those planes, okay, uh, to be parallel to the structures that we want to assess, as we should always do. So if you guys don't remember how to use CBCT to diagnose structures and how to read CBCT, this will be the first link on the top right corner of this screen. If you don't remember the structures, the anatomical structures on CBCT, then I will also add this link on the top right corner uh, of this screen during this video. So let's see this lesion then, and of course we have here a radiolucent, but here is 3D, so we need to say hypodense, okay? So the hypodense lesion located in the anterior maxilla. We have two impacted canines, so the two uh, maxillary canines are impacted, and then we can see that they are even displaced, right, in the alveolar bone. We have the nasopalatine canal displaced as well, towards the palatal direction, and then we have the four incisors here, also being in continuation with the lesion. So is this a periapical cyst or radicular cyst from one of these incisors? Or uh, is this a, a dentigeral cyst from one of the canines? Or could this be a odontogenic keratocyst? You should be able to analyze properly to make sure that you have the best evidences from your CBCT. And then here comes the best tip of today, okay? So the best tip of today is that don't analyze only the lesion, but also every single tooth in continuation with the lesion, okay? So we are going to do this together. So let's start by navigating only through the axial plane, as we should always do. Here I already have the multiplanar reconstruction open for you guys, but let's imagine that we are uh, starting from the axial plane, as we should always do. So I am moving upwards and downwards, okay, and now I am seeing the beginning of the alveolar crests, then we have the lesion, the level of the, the roots, okay, of these four incisors, the maxillary left central incisor, so uh, the 2-1 is a root canal treated, and then we are already seeing some alterations here, right? So we are seeing buccal plate resorption, even a little bit of expansion, but most importantly, buccal plate resorption here, uh, the displacement okay, the, of the nasopalatine canal, and um, of course, the, the presence of the lesion. So I will still move upwards, and then now the lesion finishes, and basically the lesion is finishing here, almost at the level of the anterior nasal spine. So now what we need to do, we need to analyze the lesion on the three planes, okay, and then you guys are already realizing that I have the lesion on the three planes, right? And then this would be basically the mesial, ext uh, mesial distal extension of the lesion crossing the sagittal midline, of course. We have the buccal and palatal uh, extension of the lesion. Of course, the lesion is extending palatally towards the nasopalatine canal and buccally towards the buccal plate. Now we need to assess, as I said, every single tooth in continuation with this lesion, and now we have six of them. So let's analyze first the incisors, okay? Why not? So we have here the lateral incisor, okay, of the right side. There is even, you know, this, those artifacts because we have even metallic restorations, okay, and metallic crowns. So we have beam hardening artifacts, all right, this will be the topic of one of the next videos. And the lesion seems pretty much well limited, okay? So the lesion is homogeneous, is well limited, is curved, sort of rounded in some areas, okay? Uh, we are seeing the relationship between the crown of the impacted canine with the root of this lateral incisor, okay? And now we go for the central incisor, all right? And then here we see better the buccal plate resorption, okay, so resorption of the buccal plate, but still the lesion is rounded, okay, so well limited, and then we suspect of a cyst, of course, right? 
uh, take a look at this. If we see this slice over here, we can even see the round shape of the lesion. All right. Now we have the lateral incisor, okay, of the left side. And what is happening here is, of course, I'm making all my axes parallel to the lateral incisor as I should always do. And then, of course, you guys are already realizing that we have uh, overextended root canal treatment, okay? With buccal plate resorption, right? Let's take a look at these limits here, all right? So the limits of the lesion. So, of course, this could be also a source of infection for, for this lesion. And then um, we go for the lateral incisor, okay? And here we have the situation of the lateral incisor. Uh, where we have the distal extension of, the, of this lesion for the left side of the patient, at least, okay? All right, now let's make all the axes parallel to the canines, okay? So let me start by the uh, right side canine, all right? And then we are now making all the axes, all right? Parallel or perpendicular, of course, to the canine, okay? Let's go for the crown level. All right, and there you have it, okay? So you are seeing the follicle, okay? So the follicle is here, and then the area of the lesion, okay? So it doesn't seem to be a dentigerous cyst for this canine, at least, because even the follicle on the skeletal aspect of the canine is uh, within the, the normal range, okay, of measurements, all right? So let's do the same now for the other canine, okay? So I will now do the same for the left K9, okay, and I make it, I make all the axes, all right, parallel to this K9, and then the situation is different. So take a look at this. The follicle is now enlarged, okay. So the follicle is enlarged all over the K9, okay, and the lesion is pretty much close to the CJ of this K9, okay. Even in this plane here, we can see that the lesion is uh, surrounding the canine, uh, the crown of the canine, okay? And now our first hypothesis, take a look at this, okay? So now the first hypothesis will be a uh, dentigerous cyst of the 2-3, of the uh, maxillary left canine. And this was actually the case. So uh, expanding like any other cyst and then pushing, uh, so displacing some roots and uh, with expansion of the buccal plates and of course with the uh, displacement of the uh, nasopalatine canal. All right, so if we try to make a 3D image of this case, okay, uh, then we need to use the, the threshold color addition, all right, and then it's not so easy to depict this lesion properly, but here we can see at least the uh, relationship of this lesion and the buccal plates and the impacted canines in case that we want to plan a surgery properly, okay? Even maybe resorption of the central incisor and the uh, overextended root canal treatment of the left central incisor. All right, so if you guys like, please hit the like button and see you guys in the next videos.